Hello and welcome to another episode of Monday Markets. As always, we're brought to you by WeWex. Links available in the description below. There's a long form article there you should read before engaging with anything. After that, if you want to sign up and punt around a little bit and see what it's like, you get two weeks of zero fee trading for deposits over 100 bucks. But before you do so, again, please read the article. It's got a lot of disclosures and information that I think is pertinent before you try to use it. Uh, even if you don't want to use the exchange, that's fine with us. Thanks for supporting the content. But there is an execution quality analytics dashboard available on the website itself regardless of where you trade you can look at the different futures and spot pairs they list different sizes different time periods compare the methodology of 1800 woo versus the usually higher requirements uh, to get those types of fee tiers elsewhere uh, and just see what your cost of trading is like so even if you're using every other exchange other than woo i think the tr execution dashboard is a useful thing to take a look at periodically so with that out of the way let's get straight into it uh, we've had some market movement most visible on the daily time frame but we'll start with the high time frame overview uh, monthly Again, not a whole lot there. 35 is the big resistance. Closer to 20 uh, are the big supports. And uh, we're diddling in the middle for the time being. I think if this monthly closes, which which it's going to in two hours, two days and six hours, uh, the way it is right now, having spiked previous months low and closed above it, I think that's a neutral to bullish signal because the breakdown from 30K uh, kind of makes sense from a technical point of view. So if the best that it could do is to spike this low and close above, that would be a sort of neutral to bullish sign that you know the market didn't roll over completely. But overall, my conclusions on the monthly are sort of loosely held. I like to do business at monthly levels and sort of if the market's in between them, I'll look at highs and lows, but with far less conviction than the levels themselves. Uh, as far as the weekly goes, uh, this time frame is slowly becoming quite interesting because we've basically gone nowhere over the last couple of months, right? So we essentially had a large impulsive breakout through 24K and then all of this is a nothing burger. You know, dips above, falls back below, dips below, falls back inside and it's just gone. I think the best way to look at it is just simply like this. Uh, it's just sideways. Now, I think uh, bigger picture, if we turn away from the sort of nuances of the price action and look at it from a zoomed out perspective, I think sideways is generally favorable towards bulls more than it is bears uh, because the preceding move is higher. So if the market just continues to move sideways, while it's reasonable to look at it as potentially distribution, I think you should at least have an open mind towards the idea that you have an impulsive break, market moving sideways, and then continuation in the direction of the impulsive break. Obviously, that argument becomes invalidated if you have an impulsive break sideways and then that breaks down. So that suggests the distribution. But at the moment, the market just hasn't broken down. So until it breaks down uh, for on that higher time frame, and especially if it starts reclaiming some of these range levels, as we we are going to look at on the weekly and the daily. I think it's worth uh, keeping an open mind towards this being a consolidation before a final push into monthly uh, resistance, and then we can have higher conviction views uh, for a rotation lower. Okay. Now, what is the evidence that's available that this is not this consolidation isn't breaking down? I think it's twofold. The first is time. We've been here for a couple of months, and the market is basically at the same price, sort of 27k. Uh, you know, went above, wasn't accepted. It went below, wasn't accepted. And the sort of fair value, if you will, is 27, 28k, and doesn't seem to be budging. And it does, uh, it's worth treating this consolidation sort of as neutral at worst. Now, as far as weekly levels and weekly structure goes, there are two kind of observations that I think are pertinent to support the argument that this isn't breaking down yet. The first is this low here, which is the first low made, made after the big bullish break of 24k. So it's sort of a weekly range low, if you will. And we've had no weekly closes below it. We had wick, 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 but no close below. And someone's just willing to soak this thing up even when the market looks pretty shit. So that would be the first kind of red flag that this consolidation is going to break the downside toward the, towards those other weekly levels. But at the moment, it's just holding up. And the market's trying, but it's not getting anywhere. So that's uh, worth paying attention to. The other indicator on the weekly, and this is more of a daily view, but it sort of makes sense on the weekly as well, and it's a level we spoke about on, I think, Altcoin Thursday, is this lowest close at sort of 27.6, where the market uh, on this candle made a lower low close relative to um, 27.6. Uh, but if you look at the last couple of weeks of price action, uh, yesterday we closed above it, and now that level is being retested. So again, uh, signs of a failed breakdown, regardless of whether you want to use the wick portion of the consolidation, that we have no closes below it, or the candle body portion on the weekly that we had a close below, but then closed above it after a nice weekly engulfing candle. So um, no overt evidence of weekly time frame weakness yet. Um, now, on the daily, that this is really going to be the make or break type of decision point for this thing. Uh, the market is currently attempting a range low reclaim, uh, and it's getting pretty close to where bulls have been validated, which means it's generally a pretty good spot to punt. Uh, proximity to invalidation is uh, an important factor. Now, I don't think you need to use the, the, the daily cluster in its entirety. And the reason I say that is because I think if you lose the top of the cluster, the, the bottom of the cluster is probably cooked, because at that point, you will have given up basically this entire momentum candle if you trade at the cluster low, and the whole thing would look fucked. So we can, I think, afford ourselves the 
the liberty of not looking at the cluster low and instead only looking at the top side of the cluster or rather if we expand that you can see that we land at this sort of former uh, range low before the lower highs so that's what we're going to do and we're going to carve out a range using those parameters lowest close at 27.6 highest close at 29.4 and we've talked about this elsewhere on another episode uh, and you can see this is kind of my operative operating view uh, of the market as it stands at the moment what happened we had an attempt to break down from the range low, and we actually spent two weeks there, right? So this is the price action I'm paying attention to. Uh, this is our range low, range midpoint, range high. Uh, what's the recent price action telling us? Um, lots of bearish retests that didn't go anywhere, and then we had a move back inside the range. Admittedly, this leg was quite hard to catch because basically in one daily candle, the market moves from below the range low Right, so it still looks like it's below resistance and all the way to the range midpoint uh, in one candle. So at the moment, the shorter term, like shorter time frame trading range, is the range midpoint at 28.4 and the range low at 27.3. My eyes deceive me. Um, so I think for bulls, the there's only really one argument and one area available um, in order to make. Uh, the case for number go up and it's essentially uh, the market pulling back to the range low or at least holding above the range low and then you sort of target the midpoint a second time expecting it to break uh, and then target the range high as your real trouble area and then if things get really crazy uh, then you target your monthly level of resistance closer to 35k uh, the reason that that's sort of attractive is because there are no other arguments for bulls like if this isn't good enough the weekly failed breakdown and then the daily range reclaim then nothing is good enough uh, so i think making bets on a higher low for continuation in that type of area of 27.3 to 27k uh, this basically is bull's last stand just like 19k was bull's last stand because it looks really bad below there uh, i think it makes sense structurally to look for a higher low there uh, with targets being maybe something intermediate sort of in the middle of that range but bigger picture at least on the daily time frame for our weekly show purposes uh, a retest of the range midpoint and the range high so something like this essentially uh, at the moment it's fine that it's reacting from the range midpoint down to the middle but anything of this sort of nature uh, seems to makes sense um and if it doesn't then we'll update at least i'll update my views with an update video uh, but for the time being if the market's going to not break down on the weekly if it's going to spike on the monthly and the daily is going to attempt to reclaim i'm open-minded to playing a chunk of that uh, and especially because it should be a fairly unambiguous signal so for example if the daily fails like if this isn't enough and if this reclaim uh, ends up just being a spike that peters out and then closes back below the range low then that's about as bearish as it gets there's there's there are no redeeming bullish arguments if this uh, reclaim attempt isn't enough uh, and then you can just abandon ship and look for sells towards the double bottom and then probably a breakdown towards uh you know 22 24 or whatever so bulls have carved themselves out one chance and i quite like doing business where it's kind of do or die uh, so i'm open-minded towards those types of higher low punts um yeah that, that's really it for btc i'm not a huge fan of diddling in the middle here uh, if the market doesn't pull back and chooses to go without me and starts to accept above the range midpoint i might be forced to diddle in the middle but you know that's looking too far forward into price action uh but in in principle uh, if it doesn't give me a higher low i'm not against looking for acceptance above the mid to take me to the high as well um and that's really all there is to say. I think the four hour complements that view uh, almost entirely. Again, the bear case for this market is that all it did is spike the high uh, and now it's just gonna bleed back inside the range and go towards the lows, okay? Uh, but you can see that even on the daily time frame, oh, sorry, on the four hour, this range low that we covered at 27.3 ends up being a pretty self-evident four hour pivot as well. Sort of former range high, you know, basic support resistance stuff. You've got resistance, 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 breakout, uh, and it should hold if the market is strong. If it turns into a deviation, then not only will the four hour look like crap, then the daily will look like crap, and then it sort of cascades to other time frames. okay? Uh, if you want, to, again, a four hour view, you could just do something like this. Uh, take the recent range boundaries here and here, essentially. That's what I think makes sense. You can throw on a midpoint on it if you like and want to get fancy with it, uh, and those are your sort of fast moving levels for directional bias anything above it is acceptable uh back below on the four hour red flag especially on the daily red flag and if it starts to roll over then that in itself is a short setup this becomes a deviation you take it to zero but until proven otherwise uh it just looks like the daily is trying and i'm gonna let it try essentially okay uh so that's the trading plan for this week see if the market uh gives any favorable setups into daily support because bulls have one chance and i like those setups okay uh, and if it's a trap hey ho we'll probably go way way lower so that's that's fine um eth 
uh, sort of conflicts with this view because it's far less clear. So on the weekly time frame, unsurprisingly to virtually everyone, uh, it still hasn't fixed the failed breakout attempt at 1930-ish. So no weekly close above there. Uh, you could make a similar argument to BTC that sort of well, it hasn't broken down either, and it's had a lot of chances to do so. Uh, but I think that ends up being neutral at best. So yes, it hasn't broken down, but it's still at resistance. And you have a range between basically 1.8 and 1.9, and that's a bit of a snooze fest. Uh, the daily time frame is far less constructive uh, than BTC, actually. So I'm not as much a fan of that. There's no sort of overt range low reclaim attempt. Instead, the market just rallied into one of the previous failed breakout levels uh, around this sort of 1900 level once again. Uh, and that's where that's where it got stuffed. So, I mean, you could start to make an argument that, that maybe this this mini consolidation here was our range of sorts and that dips into there are good for a higher low and then go higher. Uh, I'm open to that, but honestly, if there are going to be higher low dip attempts, I prefer them on BTC purely charts, chart wise uh, than ETH. Uh, and at the moment, I didn't think at the time of sort of uploading this video, it's at least for me a great place to chase because ETH is at daily resistance at 1910 and BTC is at the range midpoint at wherever this is sort of coming off the range midpoint at 28.4. So the easy, so the impulsive leg is done. Now you're diddling in the middle. If it wants to accept above the diddle zone, that's, God, I'm not a serious person, am I? Uh, if it wants to go accept above the midpoint and not give pullbacks, I might have to chase that. If it does give a pullback, I prefer the BTC structure than the ETH structure. And I think ETH BTC um, looks decent, but sometimes I won't really care about the relative pairing and I'll just see whichever chart is clearer and act accordingly. Um, not much else to add as far as other markets, alts, whatever. Uh, the S&P's been weird, you know, had a breakout attempt that then failed and now it's back above. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable making the double fake out don't happen type of argument for this chart, but on the higher time frames, at least in the weekly and the monthly, it looks better than uh, the daily, which is a bit choppy. Uh, in the back of my mind, I do I do have a sort of latent scenario that everything hits monthly resistance and then goes to zero. <laughs> so S&P trades up into its monthly cluster at 43 to 4,400. Uh, BTC trades into monthly resistance at sort of uh, 35 to uh, 37K, and it all does so in concert, and then uh, you get a proper chunky rotation lower from there. But that's honestly just conjecture. It's not tradable. And for the time being, I'm just simply um, looking at the range reclaim attempts that we've had over the weekend, which is, again, something that raises an eyebrow happened just, on, you know, it's kind of an illiquid uh, move during uh, a weekend, um, which can be a bit mean reverty. Uh, but all of that is, you know, you, you can't have a fully certain picture of the market any time. I will just simply respect this range. Uh, and if the market wants to treat it as support, I will be on board. If the arse falls out on this thing i'll probably lose some money assuming i get a setup in the first place and then look to flip short calling this whole thing uh, an ugly mid-range retest and a deviation so yeah uh, a bit rambly but hopefully that makes sense that that's all i've got for this monday i uh, leave a comment and uh, let me know if that made sense we'll try to clear it up as well on our newsletter and maybe we'll even do altcoin thursdays depending on how things go that's all from me. Leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. As always, it's brought to you by Wuax. Links available in the description below. At the very least, read the article because there are educational resources there about trade execution, counterparty risk, and all that type of stuff. Final bit of housekeeping, uh, a bit of a self-plug. I have a new video on the CryptoCred channel, uh, Daily Open Trade Strategy. So for those of you who get frustrated by the squiggles and when I say I'll look for an entry or entry trigger, uh, this is a very sort of uh, important element of that. And actually, if you go on the channel itself and go to videos, uh, there is a top-down approach to trading video, which encapsulates my approach to a large extent uh, and also an updated entry triggers video well updated is relative to three years ago or whatever uh, but th there's just some watching there that'll hopefully make you make help you make sense of everything that goes on on this channel that's all from me uh, let's see if there's a higher low or to guantanamo we go and i'll see you next week goodbye